Okay, so in this video, we're going to go a bit more in depth into the magic wand and quick selection tool as well as the free transform tool as well. So we've covered the analog rectangular and elliptical marquee tools and some of the manual selections here, but let's go into the quick selection tool here. And I'll just show you a little bit on how you can tighten up your selections and how you can gain a little bit more control. And then as we get further into the semester, when we get into clipping masks and some of the photo restoration stuff, I'll show you how to use the select and mask and refine our selections even more. But I don't want to I don't want to bombard you too much with a lot of that yet. Let's just go into some of the basic inner workings of the quick selection tool. So <clears throat> this image that we have here, this is one of my older paintings here. As you can see, it's just really nice. I can just use a lot of my old artwork for this stuff and I don't have to worry about copyrights or anything because we're all using my work. <laughs> Again, later on in the course, we'll go over copyrights and creative common licensing and things like that. But for now, we'll use my images here because they're safe and we don't have to worry about anything. So let's go ahead and um, you have the file here so you can work along with me, but let's go ahead and unlock the layer so now we can do things to it and move it, move things around. But let's come to our quick selection tool and I'll show you the benefits of each one. So the quick selection tool and the um, magic wand both have their strengths and weaknesses. So let's say in this image here we want to select, let's say this tree right here with this big loop in the middle of it, right? We want to select this image so we can copy it and then um, add it in to another place in, in our image here. So with our quick selection tool, let's just go ahead and let's start here. And we can see that Photoshop is already guessing where we want to make that selection. Now it's a little hard to see because of the nature of this photograph has a lot of black and white in it. But one helpful thing you can do here when you are having difficulty seeing your selections is you can just press Q and that's our quick layer mask and this will very quickly put all the unselected elements um, to red. You can select, you can change that to whatever you want but the default red is is kind of nice so I can see everything that I'm selecting is is now white and if I press Q again that takes me right back to the image without that mask. So remember we can press shift or option to add or subtract from our selection. So I'm gonna press shift here and I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna to try to, I'm gonna to try to get the rest of this, this tree. I'm gonna press Q again so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, Q, Let's keep adding here. And you may wanna zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and zoom. And I'm gonna decrease that size, shift. Okay, so I press Q and I say, I mean, that's good for now. I mean, I could spend more time, well, maybe down in these areas here, I can, I'll come in and select some of that. Okay. So I have this tree selected. And again, we can refine the selection even further with select and mask, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. I just wanna show you some of the real basics of the quick selection tool. And <clears throat> so I have this selection, and now let's go ahead and press Command C to copy, and then Command V to paste. Now it pastes right on top, so it doesn't look like anything changed, but we can see this new layer popped up. So let's go to go ahead and hit V for your move tool right here. And then let's just click and drag that off to the side. So we see the selection is okay. It's not great. There's a lot of the darker contour line that's around this tree that this didn't quite get. But again, I'll I'll we'll go into some other techniques here shortly. So I have my copy here. And Let's just go a little bit into the free transform tool here so you can see how we can use that. So with the layer selected, you can go to edit and, oh, where, 
edit and transform, or free transform, or the shortcut here is Command T. So Command T, and then you see this little box comes around our selection. And then here, again, we've kind of worked with this with the marquee tool in, in a little bit already, but here we can see the same things apply. We can move this image if we hold Shift, that will <clears throat> unconstrain it. So here we can just free constrain anyway. So the default here is while not holding Shift, it will keep the ratio. We can also rotate as well. And anytime you make a change, just remember you have to hit the check mark or press enter for that to finalize. But let's pull that back up, Command T, and then I'll show you a couple other things you can do. So let's go into, oh, let me just, we go to free transform. And here, since we don't want that tree to look exactly the same as I already have, let's go ahead and flip it horizontally. And then let's also flip it vertically. So we get a little bit of a change. And then we could rotate. And I'm going to hold shift and skew this a little bit. Let's rotate a little bit more. skew this to get off the page here. Okay, so something like that. And then hit the check to accept that. Now there's other things you can do. If we hit Command T again, we can go back up here into Transform. And there's other things here. We And I'll get into this later on, but we can distort, perspective, warp, we can rotate as well as manually rotate like we were doing. So, I mean, feel free to play around with these as you'd like. And again, we'll go into more, um, when we get into clipping masks, I'll show you some more um, beneficial ways to use the distort and warp and perspective. So that's your, that's your free transform tool, along with how that quick selection tool can easily just get things and, and you know, if you wanna copy and paste and move things around. So, the quick selection tool is is kind of the easier one to use as as it's as Photoshop is basically just guessing where it thinks you're trying to select and then remember pushing the shift and option keys can help add or subtract from the selection that you're doing. But let's go now. So let's go ahead and delete delete that tree and let's click up here and let's go to magic wand tool. Now there's a few different things we can do here that um, can help you get better selection. So let's just say that if I, let's say for example, I wanted to do that same thing, right? Where I wanted to, I wanted to try to pick this, this tree using the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool would not be the best tool for this. So let's see. So right now the way I have anti-alias on contiguous off and sample all layers. So the sample all layers is irrelevant. We only have the one layer, but let me show you what, what this does with contiguous on and off. So right now, Contigu contiguous is off, and if I select this white here, basically it's saying that whatever value I clicked on, it wants to select every value in the composition within 60 pixels of that color that I picked, right? So the tolerance is up a bit high, so it's including a lot of value. And then let me Command D, I'll take that away. Now watch what happens if I put a much lower tolerance of, say, 5 and then I click here again. Now it's still gonna pick a lot because there's a lot in the composition, right? But as we get in closer, we can see that the selections are much more tightly packed, right? It's only picking a tolerance of five from that original selection. Let me Command D and then here I'll put a higher tolerance in, let's say 100. And then now let me cl click, we see so it basically, I just clicked and it clicked all, the, it selected all this white and now we can see the black has not been selected. Let me put that down to 50 so we can see it better, so we can see it more. Okay. 50 still looks good. Let's say 30. I want to try to get 
Okay, so here we go. So a tolerance of 30, we can see I clicked on the white, and then it, it got a lot of this white, but we can see some of these grays it's left out. Yeah. And then go ahead and Command D and get rid of that. So anti so and then anti-alias is smoothing that selection. So if the selection is on, you're gonna have a, a smoother transition in your selection, so it won't look so harsh, but you can turn that off to get a more hard edge selection. So that's with contiguous off, right? So think of that as um, if contiguous is off, whatever you whatever color you select, Photoshop is going to try to select every color within that range in the composition. But if contiguous is on, that means it's only going to select colors that are touching. So here we go. So I, I clicked here in this white, and then it basically looked for all of the colors that were unbroken by any other uh, pixel that was outside of that tolerance. So it gave me this selection right here, just this first part of the loop. Okay. So, but let me show you where this can be beneficial. So the quick selection tool I would recommend would be a better selection for this, this loop tree here. Or you could come in with your, I mean, if you wanted to spend the time, you could come in with your lasso tool or polygonal lasso tool and, and, you know, really get in here and, I mean, this would probably be the best, but this would take the most time if you really wanted to control that. But, you know, good luck. That would take you quite a bit. So you could, you could do that around the whole thing. But um, let me show you how, let me, let me show you where that quick selection tool can be of really good benefit. So let's say, or sorry, the magic wand, the magic wand tool. Let's say that in this image right now, let's say this blue background is something we want to change, right? Let's say we want to change this to a dawn or dusk, right? So we want to change that to a to an orange or a reddish for sunset or something like this. So this is where the magic wand can be greatly helpful. So what we can do is we want to uncheck contiguous because, right, contiguous, remember, is if the colors are touching or unbroken. So we'll uncheck that. So Photoshop, so whatever color I pick, Photoshop is going to look for that same color and select it. So 30 tolerance, we might have to go higher than that, but I'm just going to click right here and see. Okay, so that's, that's selected quite a bit, but let's... Let's command plus our way in and see. Okay, so it's left out. It's left out some areas in here, All right? So let's command D to undo that, and let's put our tolerance. I don't know. Let's put it to sixty, and let's see. Let's and then let's click again inside this blue. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, that's selected quite a bit of that blue. Let's look around here. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's say we're happy with the selection. Now again, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of selections to, that Photoshop is doing here, so I'm sure some aren't all the way selected, but that looks pretty good. And now let's go to our Paint Bucket tool. And the Paint Bucket tool has the same things, right? It has the same contiguous or not. So if I hit contiguous, it'll only fill in the box that I select. So here, I'll show you. I'll hit contiguous, and let's just say right here, and I kind of already have a nice orange color picked out, but I'll, okay. And so my tolerance is 50 and then contiguous. So if I click right here now with contiguous on, it's only gonna fill in this one little section. So if I wanted to do the rest of it this way, I would have to come through and manually click each and every single one of these. Here we will turn contiguous off, and then now let's see that, let me, let me select a good one here. So if I select this one here, it will select all of the blue in the composition. So then now we can Command D, and so we can see it, it missed a little bit here and there. So, you know, I would have, I would have gone back and, here, let's quickly do it here. So Command Z. And I'm going to undo that selection. Let's put my tolerance now to 75. And now let's 
um, come back to our magic wand tool. And let's click in here. So we can see there's still a tiny bit, a tiny bit inside here that it's not getting. So you could keep, oh, I didn't, my tolerance change didn't, didn't go. So 75, and then let's click here now. Okay, that looks, that looks better. And now let's see if it, let's see how well it did. So I'll click back on my bu paint bucket tool, make sure contiguous is off, and then select. And then now Command D. Okay, that looks pretty good. I still see a teeny bit of blue here and there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So that just shows you how those two selection tools can come into handy. And again, for this image, that um, the contiguous options here for Magic Wand were essentially the way that you would wanna do something like that. So again, each of those has their strengths and weaknesses. And as we get further on, I'll show you um, even further ways to refine and select things. Um, but for now, for what we're doing for the next week, um, just getting yourself familiar with quick selection and magic wand tool and the free transformation tool as well.